In this video, we're going to be telling you how this gentleman, Corey, went from working 90 hours a week, third shift, selling insurance and working a nine to five job to um, getting free from the job and going full time in insurance sales and his journey from start to finish so that you can do it too. What's going on today, Corey? Hey, man, doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. And now I know we got uh, my business partner, Tim, here as well. We're just going to kind of have like a, a normal conversation, just like a keep a raw reality of like what it actually looks like to be successful in insurance. So um, an e-conversation, if you yeah, will. Yeah, an e-conversation. <laughs> um, so Corey, catch us up here, man. Obviously, I mean, 90 hours a week is pretty ridiculous. I know you were working third shift. Why don't you kind of tell people like what led up to that, how you got into insurance and what that first experience was like, and we can just kind of dissect it from there. All right. So we can take it a little bit back a little bit. I graduated from Texas State University in spring of 2022. Um, I don't know if we have any sports fans here, but I took the my degree and my dream was basically to be the next Skip Bayless, if you will, or Stephen A. Smith. So I went the sports radio route, media. And then I heard some great advice from someone that said, you know, if you want to see where you're going to be in the next 10 years of whatever field you're in, look at look at the people who are ahead of you and, you know, the kind of yep. life you're living. And I looked at that and I said, man, I got a long road to being, unless I become Skip Bayless, pretty middle of the road income earner. And that's just not the life I wanted. I wanted something more for myself. So I stumbled upon insurance as a way that I don't need a degree. I can just, you know, low barrier of entry. I can hop in. Yep. And I think like a lot of agents, I was ooh, met with the smack in the face a little bit like, oh, this isn't yep. as easy as a lot of people say on these videos. Um, so I joined a, a large IMO where it's basically, you know, no training. Um, it's basically just like sign up and, you know, good luck, buy these leads and, and good luck. I had no training at all and I struggled and I, I wasn't able to live off of it. So, you know, I was doing my best to watch videos, guys like you and other people. And I wasn't able to, you know, make it work for me. So I had to end up taking a job in a warehouse. Um, and I took that third shift on purpose so I could work insurance during the day. So I'm waking up at 3 a.m. and I'm clocking out at 8.30 to 9 a.m. every day. And then I'm getting on the phone and selling insurance until five or six. So yeah, that's kind of how we ended up here. And at the end of this week, I'll be done doing that and be able to focus full time thanks to you guys so yeah man and it's it's definitely not just us i mean you've put you've put a lot of work in here to to get to the road that you're at now and i kind of want to i kind of want to get a little more to the nitty gritty because that was almost like a thirty thousand foot view there but yeah i mean now he and, and i want to clarify for, for, for the people watching at home the schedule that Corey just described is a 15 hour work day and a lot of the times it's longer Wrap your head around that yeah I've seen Corey clock out at like nine o'clock at night, my time, because he was closing a deal or, you know, eight o'clock at night, my time, he's two hours ahead of me. So um, it's been pretty interesting to watch. And, and I'm super proud of where Corey's, you know, going and, and how much he's improved here. So I want to talk a little bit about like kind of some of your first experience. I'm sure a lot of agents can relate to buying leads, putting it, being told to put it on your credit card. Uh, it's a very common occurrence. And, I'm sure they probably didn't say we don't have any training. You're just going to be thrown to the wolves. They probably said they had the best training in the world. And then they said that, you know, you're just going to buy leads. And it was basically like, you know, you were just going to be a millionaire in two weeks or whatever other, you know, I got a, I got something similar that came my way when I, when I got into the business, but tell me about that. Like, I know you sold some policies and everything and, and kind of tell us about like, what was that like? Yeah. For me, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, like for me, I'm, I'm the type of guy who I look into stuff before I do it. I'd seen some of the, the horror stories, if you will. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was never going to run up a credit card or nothing like that. But um, I definitely thought it was going to be easier than it was based on, you know, what I was told. I thought you just, you know, whether you buy leads or generate your own, you're just going to call them up and they're just going to buy. I mean, it's life insurance. They're just, they need it. And then I never knew how to make a pitch. I never had anyone teach me how to present pricing or underwrite or do any of these things that goes into it, manage book of business, clients, how to deal with it. everything that encompasses, you know, this business and, you know, an upline that's not, and I, I don't think this is unique, so I don't feel special or feel bad for myself. I think there's a lot of people who go through this, um, but, you know, an upline that 
they're not really answering your calls. You got a lot of questions. It's just like, man, and then you just get overwhelmed. And that's why most people quit. Um, so that's, that's why I had to get another job just to kind of support the, you know, the cash flow of buying leads, charge back here, this and that. So, yeah, I mean, it's all sunshine and rainbows until you get out there on the field and, you know, get your hands dirty. So, yeah. hundred percent. So kind of walk us through like, what was your experience like when you first got in? Like, tell us a little bit about like kind of the story of when you first got into life insurance, you know, selling the initial policies, how that worked. And then I think there was something interesting that actually happened with the, the first three policies that you wrote. Yeah. So I had, uh, you know, been watching a lot of business YouTube stuff. So I learned how to generate my own Facebook leads um, before I even got into insurance. So I thought I had the I thought I had the game figured out, man. Like all these cats, they're buying leads. I'm gonna generate my own. Mm -hmm. to to <laughs> but um, so yeah, I would just generate them. I ended up calling them. They would never answer. I couldn't, you know, close them on the phone. So I ended up just going to their house, knocking on their door, and I sold a few like that. They ended up charging back on me because <laughs> I didn't build enough value. You know, all the all the Been things. No, but I was hustling. I always had that hustle. I mean, I think that's, you know. That's the number one thing. Like, if you're willing to put in the time and learn, like, mm -hmm. dude, you you can make it happen. But you got to be able to do that, and you got to have people to teach you how to do that. And that's what I, I didn't have at all. And even if I wanted to find it, I mean, I couldn't find it. I was trying. I was trying to find help. Um, hey, well, you know, teach me how to do a pitch. Oh, dude, just just quote them off the off the portal, and you're good. It's like, so yeah. Um, I don't know if. You, too much, I can't get too much more specific than that because I only sold a couple policies like that, but I definitely put in a lot of time to, to try and make it happen. I think that's not a rare story when it talk, when you talk about, you know, new agents coming on and getting licensed and trying yeah. to make it work. And I, I agree with that. I do, One thing I will disagree with is that most people don't put in the effort that you've put in because I've been watching you work 90 hours a week since like <laughs> February and it's the middle of April. So that's almost, what is that? Two, almost three months. I think something somewhere in that neighborhood, depending on yeah, that's okay. trying to get a, a clear track of that, but 90 hour weeks, sometimes more, um, weekends. Uh, I know, I know it's been a struggle. Like even, you know, you have a girlfriend, a family, <laughs> you know, you still have to have like, uh, some, some level of sanity by relating to humans in this world. Um, <laughs> you know, meals. I remember one of our calls when we were one-on-one -on -one talking, like we had to talk about you sleeping. Like yeah. one of, one of the feedback points was that you just weren't even sleeping enough. You had stopped taking care of yourself just to make it happen. And, and hunger like that is rare. So I wanted to point it out because it does take that to be successful in any business. But I wanted to kind of like dissect, we've kind of learned a little bit about what went wrong. Let's talk about kind of what went right in that transition for you? Cause I know you came on here, I think about middle of February or something like that. Is that right? Early February. Uh, Early February. First week, I think. First week of February. So catch me up. Like, can you lay out that progression for me and what, what happened in those first couple of months leading up to now? Um, since, uh, since February, like you're asking or. Yeah. Just like recount, like, what has it been like for you over these last few months? Cause you're, you went from, selling three policies that charged back to quitting your job and getting more yeah. in sales and commissions than you've been my to my knowledge correct me if i'm wrong have made in in like a two weeks paycheck never like three days yeah the other yeah. last week yeah yeah like kind of walk us through the transformation i think is the best yeah i don't want to say in last week i earned more money in a week than i ever had before yeah. i mean um yeah so it's about learning how to do this business like the right way and having, you know, good coaches like you guys um, with systems in place uh -huh. in, in a company that actually has the agent's success as the best interest and their best interest in mind, you know, that's, that's what it's just been for me. Like I've been able to watch like one of the best in the game easily for my money. Um, and Mr. Julian sell policies live. I mean, I've had one-on-one -on -one with you guys and like that stuff is invaluable and you know if you're able to get that i mean people would pay a lot of money for that um so just that kind of real coaching like you know if it's your first time playing golf 
and you just get out there and try and figure it out, man, you're going to suck. You need someone to show you That's how to swing. That's you know, awesome. that guy at golf. <laughs> you, you need to have a good tempo. You need to have good form. Make sure, like, and that's same with this. You need to know how to, you know, make the pitch. You need to know how to close. You need to know how to handle the objections. You need to know how to underwrite all these things that you have to learn. And it seems overwhelming at first, but when you're with a bunch of guys that and girls that, you know, do it at a high level and know how to do it, it's like, oh, I can do this. On and, our team, it actually, it seems like it's mostly girls, honestly. Yeah, we got a team <laughs> of ladies. Um, Mm -hmm. right. Shout out to the ladies on the team. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's just um, you know once you once you kind of get some good coaching, some good feedback, man, like like you can do it. Anyone can do it. Yeah, and I think that's I think it's super valuable, and I think it's definitely true. But I want to I want to hear a little bit more about specifically the time lapse of it. So how it kind of played out. So February you came in, and then like walk me through what happened there. You were working ninety hours a week. You were barely sleeping. Um, I mean, some days you came in and, and you looked like a werewolf because you, you hadn't shaved in weeks, <laughs> right? No, I'm, I'm messing with you. No, you're, um, it's true. But I mean, like, kind of, kind of like, give me the time lapse. Break it down for me as a new agent. I'm watching this. I don't even know what it's like. To, I don't even know what it's like to sell a policy. Break that down for me. Yeah. So the first couple of weeks, like, you know, I'm learning the scripts. I'm learning, um, watching, like the hundreds of training videos that we have um i'm like watching other people sell eventually and then i'm after i would say what it, about a week two weeks i hop on the phone uh, i think it's like a week i hop on the phones and then i'm calling and then it's like i'm getting my feet wet again uh and at first it, it's slower for me you know i'm a newer it was newer at sales i'd only done that that um previous time where i sold like three policies um so i'm, I'm learning um, you know, falling on my face a little bit, then all of a sudden I close one and all of a sudden I close another one. And then it's, that's like a month in, I'm closing one a week. And then now I'm closing two or three or four a week. And since April 1st, I've had my biggest jump in terms of production. And it's like kind of been off to the races. That's the way I see it now where, you know, I have high goals for myself, but yeah, I mean, it just, it just snowballing of learning, getting better, feeling more confident. And then, I would say a month in, it's like I'm making more money than I ever had before. I'm quitting my job. So, yeah, that's beautiful. And I think the biggest takeaway that I had from that, Tim, weigh in on this if you think that's if this is wrong. My biggest takeaway there was that it just like it doesn't happen immediately. It's not overnight. And like what I've consistently seen, we've got an agent um, who's done like I don't know, 12 grand in sales this week so far. And we've got, uh, you know, two that are consistently doing about 10K a week in sales online. Um, some weeks it's more, some weeks it's a little under, you know how it is with sales. But um, the thing that I've found is that like nobody came out doing 10, 12K, 8K in their first week. It's always been about one weekend, they usually make about one sale. And then the second weekend, they usually make about two. And it is that snowball effect that you're talking about. But most people never roll a snowball long enough to see it build up. And so yeah. instead of having a snowman, they just have a little piece of ice that melts on the side of the road. And then they say insurance sales either doesn't work or they just don't look somewhere else to go and see success because they get, they, yeah, they get too focused on the failure that they had in their first place. Like as much as, as much as some people will say like uh, maybe insurance isn't for them or whatever. I think the majority of the people just give up when they have the first experience that you had when most of us have had the same experience, like that's just insurance sales to start, right? right. It's mostly a clown show. Um, so I don't know. I think that was, that was worth touching on. And I don't know, Tim, do you have anything to add on that? No, I mean, I think that's, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. It's, it's like, there's, there's a saying that people say, and it's like, it's over, it's overdone, but it's very true. And it's, you cannot lose if you do not quit. And like Corey has just kept, pulling the slot machine of making the dials and showing up. And it's like, you're basically like, it's like little, um, there's a book called principles by Ray Dalio. He's like a multi multi billionaire. And he talks about this process of like improvement. And so you go, right. You, you start taking action and then all of a sudden you fail and then you learn from your failures and then take more action. And you just repeat that process over. I'm like, trying to figure out where my fingers going but basically you're just you're just doing these loops and continuing 
you're continuing on an upward trajectory as long as you keep learning from your failures and taking action. Um, and that's essentially what Corey's done just consistently over months and months. And um, that's what he's going to keep doing. And, and, you know, the sky's the limit as far as I see it. Yeah. And I think something important too is um, all the people that we've seen come in and have success, I'm hard on myself. I haven't had, uh, I didn't ascend as fast as a couple other people. But I'm on my own journey, and I am ascending. Like the numbers, you know, say that. I mean, like, and you have to be okay with that. There's this. Um, I heard a YouTuber say, when you get in a new industry, you got to take the jab. It's like you're in a box fight. Boom, you take the jab. You might take it twice, and then you slip it. But now you got to watch out for the right hand. You get hit with the right hand. You hit with the right hand twice. Now you're slipping, able to roll and get your licks in. But if every time you take the jab you switch to a new industry, you got to take that jab again in the new industry yeah. or you're yeah. going to take your right hand in the new industry. So if you don't ever stay in the fight long enough to get your licks in, you'll never get your licks in and you're going to end up being just complaining and, um, you know, not living the life you want pretty much. So that's very, very important is, you know, don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to yourself. Am I doing better than I was last week? Then I'm on the right track. Yeah, and that's what I try to focus on. That's huge. Pretty sure that was Jay Waller that said that, but what do I know? Hey, a Southern um, cowboy, just like me. So. Exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Waller. Cool, man. Well, I think that this this video has been super valuable. I don't know. There's, actually, there's a question that I want to ask because you mentioned something earlier, and this like, I wrote this down because I, I really wanted to ask you. I'm genuinely like curious. Mm -hmm. Um, you had mentioned that you knew how to generate leads before you even started selling insurance. So my question to you is like, what prompted you to join a free lead model, right? If you know how to generate leads on Facebook. That's a, that's actually a great question. Um, when you're, question. when you're in, when you're an independent and you guys have been in the industry longer than me, but you can speak to this. Um, when you're an independent insurance agent, you're not just a marketer. You're not just a closer. You're not just a, someone who sells like you're everything encompassing the one. So that's great. If I can generate, and get someone to fill out a Facebook form. But if I can't call them and close them and I can't underwrite their deal and I can't, I can't even think of all the stuff I've learned now. Like when I think back to before I joined, I didn't know anything like, um, because yeah, you take your insurance license test, but that doesn't, I mean, what are you going to learn from that really as far as practical selling? Like that's not what it's about. It's no, about you know how to explain term versus whole life, the complex way. But yeah. And, and that's, that's why. And, you know, if you if you are independent and you're trying to, you know, do everything by yourself, like you have to focus on all those aspects. Whereas here, I'm just locking in. I, I don't have to worry about another thing. I can just, you know, talk to my um, clients, make money, close deals, and that's it. And it's not near as all encompassing and stressful. And when you're new and you aren't going to have the best training, that's going to be the best route for you, in my opinion. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the thing that's interesting to me in this also is that like a lot of people are looking at the wrong metrics. They want to get like leads or they, like they want to get a lot of leads for a, a low cost off of like generating their own or they want to get the highest comp and go somewhere else. Like you're you're not going to get the highest comp at, at insurance because you don't have to do everything else. But the plus that comes with that is you can actually earn more money because you're focused on selling instead of focused on admin <laughs> or trying to figure out how to generate your own lead. Cause like what people don't talk about is how much they pay a guru, right. To set them up on Facebook or something. And we used to be the guru too. Yeah. We <laughs> used to be the guru. So I know, but I, I met people that would spend three, four, five, six grand on, on getting their ad set up. And then they would go out and generate leads or whatever. And then just like Corey said, it, it that was the start. He hadn't even gotten to the sales portion of it yet. And so, I think it's it's valuable to just figure out what it is that you're good at or you want to be good at. I'm personally a, um, a sales guy. Like if you guys notice, I'm not in the in the you know you guys wouldn't notice because you're not there. But I'm not in the marketing meetings talking about how to how to generate leads with Tim. I'm in the sales meetings talking about how to make sales with the salespeople, and those people are making sales, and our agents are doing better than. 95% of independent agents because they're just focused on the one thing that makes them money, which is selling instead of administrative work or setting up their CRM or 
getting a new CRM or going to that new IMO that gave them a little bit of a comp bump, but then they're, you know what I mean? It, it's just being sticking to one thing and doing it well, like you mentioned with the industry and the same thing with the company, whether it's with us or somewhere else, but just doing one thing and doing it well, I think that's the secret to success. Yeah, I've had to learn that the hard way. That's for sure. Same. One thing I'll add to is when I first was looking at um, IMOs to join, like I saw some videos and I'm like, why would I join anyone who doesn't have the highest comp? Why would I not just pick the highest comp? Doesn't that make sense? Duh. Yeah. And at, at first you, you think that makes sense, but there's a there's a reason why certain comp percentages are what they are. And it's because like, you know, if you're getting up, 100 110 whatever it is but you're not gonna have if you can't sell then it doesn't matter and you're paying for all these softwares and you're paying for these leads what happens when you go like i did four weeks of running up a facebook ad you know every day and now i'm in the hole it's like oh and now there's no more leads to get so you're you're, you're done exactly. like it's like oh i'm just done for now i have to go get a job and wake up at 3 a.m and stack boxes mm-hmm. so I would say, I mean, if you're really in this for the long haul and you want this to be a career path, you sh- your number one goal should be to get as good as you possibly can. That should be your goal. Not how can I just get the highest comps? No, how can I get as good at what I'm doing as possible? And exactly. that's a, a, some type of company that has a training program and no one's training harder or better than we are. So. Absolutely. That's good. Tim, do you want to wrap this up here? I think we've touched on a lot. I don't want to, I don't want to tire Corey out with the, with the uh, intervention or the, or the investigation here. So I'll let you wrap this yeah. up. And we'll get out of here. hundred percent. Well, yeah, appreciate you guys watching um, for all of you guys that made it to the end. If you want to learn more about working with insurance, there's a link down below in the description. There's like a 30 minute video that breaks down, you know, what we're building, how we're building it and how you could potentially be a part of it. Uh, but with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.